So we've gone through three of the four questions we started with this morning. Why give? Because it is good to learn and practice generosity. Why give to church? Because church is about the work of intergenerational relationship, connection, and transformation. Why give to this church? Because there's something here, some spark that we have together that brings us each to this place. Also because John Wolfe tells us that we should. <laughs> Last question then, why give to this church now? And to answer that question, we have to be real about the moment that we're in, in October of 2023. There's been a lot of um, conversations, including one um, national broadcast this week about inflection points in history, right? Places and times where many possible futures exist. These are the kinds of times um, that climate activist Christopher Bach describes as times when small changes can be amplified and have far greater impacts than expected under usual circumstances. I think we're in one of those moments as a congregation this fall. So I wanna unpack what I mean by that a little bit. The last three years at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln have been weird. <laughs> they just have. That's the best way I've found to put it artfully. We've talked about the effect that COVID-19 had on this congregation at length at other times. I'm not gonna dwell on that again. But it's also been a weird three years for the congregation's finances. Over the last three annual budgets, we've had grants from the Federal Paycheck Protection Program. We've had supplemental requests of the congregation to keep our staff whole during the pandemic. We've had big donors come in as angels late in pledge drives. We've put together contingency budgets that have ended up unused in a file in my office. Uncertainty has been the dominant theme behind the scenes of the last few budget cycles. And all of that was correct and necessary, right? Given the context we were in, because uncertainty was not just behind the scenes of the budget process, it was explicit and in front of everybody, it was the scene. It has been an uncertain three years, the explicit theme of our community. We operated for three years in a kind of high crisis response gear. But here's the thing that we're facing this fall. Perpetual crisis is not a vision. <laughs> it feels like it sometimes, but it's no way to actually set up a congregation that goes for generations. So we have to figure out who we are now, outside of crisis response. Where are we going together? And so the 2024 budget, this thing that we're putting together now, this thing that we're talking about and doing this long annual pledge campaign, long annual giving campaign about, is going to be the baseline for the congregation going forward. We're not going to compare the 2024 budget to the 2019 budget. We're gonna compare the 2025 budget to the 2024 budget. This is the one that sets the baseline going forward. And that is what makes this an inflection point. The point where small changes can be amplified and have far greater impacts than expected under usual circumstances. Because a small change one way or another in this year's budget will have ripple effects over the next decade because it will set the baseline for who we are as a church post-COVID. And it's important that you know where we are right now. Kim's already said it, the board is here today. There's one week left in the pledge campaign. It's the 22nd, we close the, the annual giving books on October 31st. Over the last three years, every year we've done a supplemental ask 
and every year that supplemental ask has brought in between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. We're not asking for that this year. Instead, we're asking for everybody to consider their pledges, raise them if you can, and help us set a baseline, not based on sort of extra supplemental giving that changes from year to year, but what can we count on year after year? It's October 22nd. Right now, we've received, as of this morning, we've received pledges from 74 families in the congregation. Of those 74, 52 have increased their pledge from last year. That's incredible. That's incredible. Eight have decreased. 14 pledges have stayed the same. Additionally, we've had people pass away and people move out of state in the last year. And so adding up all of that, all the people who have raised or lowered their pledges in this annual giving campaign or who have died or who have moved away, our total pledges compared to last year are up about $4,000. That's fantastic, that's actually fantastic. 50 people increasing their pledge is a big deal and we can't lose track of that. If you are one of the people who have increased your pledge, do not hear anything that I'm saying other than thank you so much. It really matters. But a net change of $4,000 does not make up 50 or $60,000 in a supplemental ask, right? Doesn't make up an inflation rate close to 10%. The health insurance bills that we've been getting the last year have jumped up significantly. So that's the inflection point, where a small change can make a large difference over the next few years. Because if the final numbers on October 31st look like they do right now, then we will have some very difficult decisions to make as a community. And I need to say this bluntly because the next time I talk about this with the congregation will be the town hall, and these decisions will have been made past tense at that point. So this is the time that we have to talk about them and act on them. When I say difficult choices, that's a euphemism. And you need to hear that, because that means cuts to our staff. There is no combination of programmatic cuts at this church that make up a 50,000 or 100,000 deficit. There just aren't. So that's where we're at. Let me see, what did John Wolf say? You want to support a Unitarian Universalist church because it has a free pulpit, because you can hear ideas expressed which would cost any other minister his or her job. <laughs> Part of the job here is truth-telling, and that is the truth of where we're at in this moment. But the other truth of a Unitarian Universalist church is that I can't actually tell you what to do at this point. We're not that kind of church. I'm not that kind of minister. When I was um, a few wise colleagues and I, um, I was asking them what I should say uh, in this moment. And they reminded me that uh, it's my job to hand the work back to the congregation. That this is not work that's held by the minister or even the board. It's work that's held by the whole congregation. So I'm handing this to you. But I hope I'm handing you more than bad news because I'm also reminding you. I can remind you of what you found here can remind you of an intergenerational community, of a place of connection, a community of transformation. I can remind you that generosity feels good. I can tell you that what you do here matters, that little changes right now will matter for a decade. And I can tell you that as the Board of Trustees was talking about this service, they decided that they as individuals would all show up on this particular Sunday and take over all the volunteer roles and be here to ask, answer questions. And in emails back and forth and planning it, they had a simple name for this service. They called it Hands to the Pump. I can remind you of all of that. What we build now is up to you.